Sustaining ecosystems. The idea of this session is to look at what ecosystems are and also look at some of the words and terms that are associated with ecosystems. So what is an ecosystem? An ecosystem is a community of plants, animals and the environment in which they live. They can be as small as a pond or they can be huge, the size of a desert um, or the size of a rainforest. They contain living parts, the plants and animals. These are called the biotic parts. So in this pond, we have ducks, we have fish, but also we have the pond plants and trees. They're all the living parts. We also have abi abiotic parts, things like the rocks and the soil and things that are non-living. All the living parts we can classify into producers, consumers or decomposers. Producers are plants that produce food that can be eaten. So a bush might have berries on and trees might have fruit on that insects, birds and animals can eat. They're called the producers. Consumers are things that eat other things. So a bird that eats a berry is a consumer, but also a spider that's eating a fly, that's also a consumer. Finally, we have decomposers. These are things like bacteria and fungi that break down dead material within the ecosystem. Things like dead leaves or dead animals will be eaten or digested, broken down by decomposers. If we're describing ecosystems, we often meet the phrases food chain and food web. A food chain shows what eats what within the ecosystem. So grasshopper eats grass, but the mouse might eat the grasshopper and then the owl might eat the mouse. The difference between a food chain and a food web is that a food web shows lots of overlapping food chains. So whilst a frog might eat a butterfly, it also eats a grasshopper. And whilst an eagle might eat a thrush, it could also eat a wolf. Well, I assume if the wolf is small enough. An example of an ecosystem is a hedge. And here you can see the food web for a hedge. We've got the producers, that's the bush bearing the berries. And then every other thing on this food web is a consumer. Decomposers would be things like fungi and bacteria that are eating the dead things within this food web. Here's an example of the British woodland ecosystem. If you'd like to have a go, you can try to draw your own food web for these parts of the woodland ecosystem and then see if you can label at least one producer, one consumer and one decomposer on the food web. Pause now if you wish. Now, the different parts of ecosystems are interdependent. That just means they rely on each other. They depend on each other. So the weather affects an ecosystem. If we have a hot, dry summer, it could mean the plants don't grow so well, which would mean there's fewer berries on the plants which would mean that birds might starve and have to fly off elsewhere to try to find food, which then would mean you'd have less um, sparrowhawks as consumers. So every single part depends on each other. If it's a hot, dry summer, you'll probably get less sparrowhawks. That's what interdependent means, just each part relying on the other parts. Um, if you'd like to have a go at trying to do one of these, Let's imagine one quarter of a forest is cut down by humans because they want to use the wood. See if you can um, show how the different parts of the forest would depend upon um, each other. So this might lead to there being less birds, that might lead to there being less animals um, within the forest. Let's move on. What is an ecosystem then? Well, an ecosystem is an area where plants and animals have been adapted to a particular environment. So a pond is an ecosystem because if you walked three, four, five meters away from the pond, you'd have totally different plants and animals. A cave is an ecosystem because it contains bats and their 
poo, which is called guano and lots of insects. But again, if you moved away from the cave, the plants and animals there would be totally different. Number two, what's the living and non-living parts called? Well, that's abiotic and biotic. And then finally, what are the three categories the living parts can be classified into? Well, it's your producers, your consumers and your decomposers.